Okay everybody, following in a great tradition of making videos without doing any preparation, this week we're going to talk to you about flip-up helmets. Um, the myths that surround them, the differences, and what's actually available. Now as I remember, the flip-up helmet was actually conceived by a helmet brand called Nolan back in the early 80s. Uh, and they actually made a flip-up helmet in fiberglass, which was very difficult at the time. Um, and it was, wasn't bad effort actually. Uh, but then Nolan got kind of badly distributed in the UK and it disappeared off the scene. The early 90s was the era of the polycarbonate flip-up helmet. And that's when flip-up helmets really started to take off. Um, polycarbonate or plastic basically is much easier to manufacture and it's much easier to manufacture with a flip up construction and latterly with a flip up construction that also features an integral sun visor or an integral flip down visor which of course is totally legal um, whereas a black visor which is permanently fixed to a helmet is totally illegal. So there are several categories of flip-up helmet and they do have some major differences. The most common flip-up helmet is the polycarbonate version like the Caberg Trip or the Aero Matisse. They're the two most famous ones. This is a Caberg Trip um, it's a pretty good effort. The distinguishing feature of the Caberg is that it is quite large in the front. It's got quite a lot of chin room. People like it for that reason. And it has got an integral dart visor operated by control on the top of the helmet. So when you're riding along you can do it with one hand like a chimpanzee might stroke his head, boom boom. And it's available in matte black, gloss black and white as far as I know. And I think the retail these days is about 120 quid. It got a pretty good rating in the sharp test. Uh, I think it did the best out of the plastic flip ups. And as I say, it does have an integral dart visor. Now, its competition is this competition, probably the best looking, definitely the lightest, um, is the Aero Matisse. And this has also got a flip down sun visor. And we like this helmet because it's very light at the front. Doesn't have so much room in the front of it. And um, it didn't get such a high rating in sharp test. But it's incredibly well made. Aero is a massive company. Both these companies, although they don't advertise, are very big companies and the products are excellent and this is a great helmet about 150 quid the genius of the flip down or the flip up is that you can not only use it open with the sunglasses down giving you eye protection but you can use it with the chin piece down as a full face helmet but with the visor up and the sunglasses down this gives you twice as much ventilation as the full visor down so you can use it in a hot country still get plenty of circulation but have the protection of the chin piece and the eye protection of the sunglasses so those those are really the price bracket 100 to 150 quid those are the two best options they're polycarbonate flip ups and the flip comes to that level and they have an integral black visor the the main competition to this is actually a completely different helmet which is the roof boxer the genius of the roof boxer is that it has a chin piece which moves separately from the visor so that means the chin piece can be flicked all the way back to the back of the helmet so it doesn't create drag because on a normal flip up this is where the chin piece stops because the visor is attached to it and it can't go any further. The roof, the visor 
and the chin piece are separate. So you can have the visor down with the chin piece all the way back, or you can have the chin piece down with the visor up, or chin piece down, visor down, as a full face helmet. The limitation of this helmet is that it does not have, and will never have, as far as I can see, I don't think it's possible, uh, an integral sun visor. The advantage of this helmet is that unlike the flip-ups we've already discussed, it's made in fiberglass, which is a vastly superior material for helmet construction, because it absorbs the energy of an impact rather than deflecting it. Um, and the, the deflection of impact, which as we all know, causes brain rotation, which is the sort of biggest single cause of, cause of fatal head injuries. So, great lid, doesn't have a sun visor. Most, a lot of people that don't know much about the differences assume that roof has a sun visor. There is no helmet in the roof range which does. So, apart from those two main differences, you then also have a series of flip-up helmets which are made in fiberglass. The most famous of which is the Shoei Synchrotech or the Syn Shoei Multitech. This is an older one, um, and it's a uh, this is an old old Synchrotech, and there's now a later version called the Multitech. It works just like the plastic flip-ups, exactly the same level of articulation, but it's fiberglass. Obviously, it's a lot more expensive, up way over 300 quid. It's what the cops use because they're not paying. Um, and it's generally a great lid. And obviously, in terms of impact absorption, one can only assume vastly superior to the polycarbonate versions. Again, it does not have an integral sun visor. There are other options. They're very expensive. BMW system series and the Schuberth but we're talking anything between 300 and 600 quid. Did that work? This is the question. Wanda, what's your verdict? Which one would you have? 